kind of pomp and majesty of, of Danny's arrival, it just felt like the natural place to start the season. The arrival was a, was a way to capture what was at stake for Danny and for John. Looking back to the very beginning and how young Maisie was back then and wearing the Stark soldier's helmet falling over her head and she just looks like this little kid. And now she's a grown woman and she's there watching again. But this time she steps aside to let a little kid come in to watch because she remembers how thrilling it was. It's a whole new procession. And so instead of Robert arriving with Queen Cersei and Jamie Lannister and the Hound, it's Daenerys coming with Jon Snow. I don't think the North is the most welcoming place to outsiders. Danny's smart, she senses that distrust, and she's gonna make the best of a bad situation, but that doesn't mean that she likes it or she's happy. When you're doing something good for people and you get met with what Sansa gives her, and they meet in the courtyard, it's understandable that she would be upset. We've been with these characters on a pretty regular basis all the time for the past however many years. The fact that they're coming back together again for the first time means more to them than it may mean to us. The Lady of Winterfell has a nice ring to it. So does Hand of the Queen. Depending on the Queen, I suppose. I think that if Tyrion would have shown up on his own to Winterfell, he would have gotten a much different reception from Sansa than he did uh, coming as the hand of the queen, Daenerys Targaryen. There's also the specific thing that happens in that scene, which is Tyrion has told everybody that the Lannisters are coming to join the cause, and it's amazing to her that this person she thought was so smart would ever take Cersei at her word on something like that. I used to think you were the cleverest man alive. How did you survive a knife through the heart? I didn't. Jon Snow and Arya are two of the most important characters in the story, and they love each other very deeply. Arya was the only one who treated Jon like a real member of the family when he was a child, and he was the only one who treated her with the respect that, that she needed when she was a kid. Jon has invited this huge army of, of foreigners into their home, and Arya understands why he did it, but Arya's on Sansa's side. Are you defending her? I'm defending our family. So is she. I'm her family too. Don't forget that. Blood is definitely thicker than water when it comes to Starks. Go on. I don't know how to ride a dragon. Nobody does until they ride a dragon. No one's ever ridden a dragon except for Danny. Only Targaryens can ride dragons, and that should be a sign for John. John's not always the quickest on the uptick, but eventually he gets there. We wanted to kind of re-anchor their relationship. It seemed important for it to involve the dragons since the dragons play such an important role. It's a major thing for her when she sees they have some kind of connection to him. They allow him to be around them. Then when he flies up with her and shows her where he used to hunt as a kid, I think she falls even farther in love with him. Seeing John and Danny on the dragons together, it's a John and Danny moment, but it also seeds in the idea that these creatures will accept Jon Snow as one of their riders. Don't be afraid. One of the challenges, but also one of the uh, exciting things about this, this episode, this whole season, is bringing together characters who have never met. Sam has long been one of the more important characters in this story, but he's never seen Queen Daenerys, and yet they're connected by various threads. The obvious one, which we know from the beginning of the scene, is Jorah. Sam saved him, and so Jorah owes Sam this great debt. What none of them realize until midway through the scene is that they have another horrible connection. There are all these things that you know about those characters that the other characters don't know, and some of them are very important. Danny murdered Samwell's father and brother. That's a really complicated thing for Sam because he had a really fraught relationship with his father. You know, Sam's older brother was not a bad person and, and died really quite bravely standing by his father's side. John Bradley did an excellent job the difference between the way he takes the news of his father's death and the way he takes the news of his brother's death, it was a subtle thing that he does with very few words. It's the kind of thing that he could find out in a number of different ways, but it seemed like a very an effective preamble and in way into that later moment. Daenerys, she executed my father and brother. I executed men who disobeyed me. You've also spared men. Thousands of wildlings when they refused to nail. I wasn't a king. 
but you were. The fact that John's real parents were who John's real parents were is not news to us at this point, but what we don't know is the way that John is going to take this. How's the explosion going to look? Sam as a brother of the Night's Watch and John are more brothers than Bran and John ever really were. He knows it's going to hurt John and it's going to shatter his whole worldview. For all they know, the Army of the Dead could attack the next day and someone has to tell John before that. He's being told something that he both knows is true and can't handle. So he tries to throw things in front of it to prevent him from having to deal with the, the truth of what he's being told. The thing he throws in front of it here is the fact that it means his father was lying to him his whole life. You've never been a bastard. You are true heir to the Iron Throne. The truth that Samwell tells John is probably the most incendiary fact in the entire world of the show. We chose to play the whole thing on John's face because as great a job as John Bradley is doing presenting this information, he's really just presenting information we know already. Daenerys is our queen. She shouldn't be. This treason means the truth.